Governor of Cross River State Ben Ayade defects to the ruling All Progressive Congress APC. What does this mean for the opposition party, the PDP? And the Attorney General of the Federation Justice Abubakar Malami states that the Southern Governors have no moral justification to call for restructuring. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Ann Paul. The governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, has formally defected to the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. Ayade uh, announced his departure from the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, while hosting six APC governors who visited him in Calabar, the state capital. His defection comes barely six months after the appointing state governor, David Umahi. Well, joining us to have this conversation is the um, member representing Bekwara Ubudu Obanliku Federal Constituency uh, in Cross River State and at the floor of the National Assembly in the House of Representatives. And, of course, we also have Baba Isa, um, who is a legal practitioner, joining us via telephone. Honorable Lego, it's good to have you join us. Great. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, interestingly, um, every single person across the Federation is tweeting about the move of the governor of Cross River State uh, from the PDP to the APC. Uh, a lot of people might say that they saw it coming. A lot of people preempted it. Some other people took it as a shock. But uh, you were there when the governor was declaring that he was moving to the APC. What do you think preempted this move by the governor? Do we have him? Okay, well, let's just move away uh, from the Honourable. We'll try to get him back. Um, we have joining us Baba Isa, who is a legal practitioner. And um, we, we, a lot of people are asking questions as to, this is the first time, Baba Isa, um, a sitting governor in Cross River State, which is, has always been known as a People's Democratic Party state, um, who has decided to switch to the APC while he's still governor. Um, are there any legal implications to this? Well, um, I, I don't think there are any legal implications, um, so to speak. Um, the, the only time the Constitution provides for a legal implication when uh, a political office holder is defecting is when a member of the National Assembly or a member of the House of Assembly, a legislator, so to speak, is defecting. So when the legislator is defecting uh, without a crisis of the party or a factionalization of the party, or without uh, the party that elected him or brought him into the house being matched with another faction of the party, then the constitution said the seat of such a legislation should be declared vacant. But in terms of a governor, uh, there is no such accommodation no, in the no, Constitution. No, there, there, there's no, there's no such. I, I think um, the constitutional provision for freedom of association, association holds sway. But I think, personally speaking, there is actually a, a higher um, obligation, a higher implication than just the legal or the constitutional one. If you ask the people to vote on the platform of a particular party, I think uh, there's a high moral obligation on your side not to defect after you have gotten the people's mandate, after you have gotten the people's votes via a particular, particular political platform. So that, that's, that's how I say it. I'm going to come back to you, Baba Isa, but we, st we have um, back on the line, Honorable Legoy Dabo. Um, Honorable, I asked a question earlier and I hope you heard me, but if you didn't, I'm going to ask again. Um, this is the first time a sitting governor uh, in Cross River State, a state that has, pure, has always been a PDP state, is switching to the All Progressive Congress. And he's done that while he's on the seat. Um, and I asked, because you were in that room while the governor was speaking on his defection, what do you think was responsible for this move? Because you are part of the people who have moved with the governor from the PDP to the APC. I, I think the governor did today was a step by the governor 
has always uh, appealed to, to try the crisis in the party across River State. Uh, the PDP in Cross River State had a series of crises. You would recall when with the uh, Congresses, candidates from those Congresses emerged and um, suddenly at the national a different list was uh, made public. And the governor said this was east of uh, uh, Delhi Gates uh, Party uh, chairman, ward chairman, and the rest that emerged during the Congresses and that the party should look into it. So in Cross River State, we've had series of litigations, we've had factions in the party. Uh, the other faction went to court and um, it's been going on and on. And and the governor has appealed to the party that the way forward was to uh, cancel congresses and repeat and then get all the things on the table agree and so that we have a smooth congress so that we can have a united moving into 2023 but that has not happened you know and then come to think of it cross river state is uh not a very rich state uh, we're one of the poorest states in the country. We cannot continue to stay in opposition and in opposition that is not going down well with us in terms of protecting our interests. So the governor took a decision today to move to the ruling or progressive Congress. And I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, we'll continue to support this governor's move and we'll continue to galvanize our people. Let's see how we can key Cross River State back into the center. Let's see how we can support His Excellency, the President of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, to end well. There's a lot of crisis in the country. It's not enough to sit down and criticize and complain. We can all go in there and see how, how we can make a difference and okay. see how we can correct the ills that exists today. So I think today Cross River State has turned to APC. There's a lot of jubilations, there's a lot of celebration in Cross River as I speak to you today. And uh, we're looking forward to 2023. And it's my belief that 2023 will deliver Cross River State to the ruling. Of I, 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 I want to pick on I want to pick on some of the things that you mentioned as the reasons why you uh, decided or the governor had decided to make this move. Um, other than the fact that you have had infighting uh, within the party and um, the Congresses, according to you, um, the governor had appealed that it be redone, but of course the party, according to you, did not do anything. Um, but you said something about getting Cross River State to the center. And you also talked about um, not sitting um, you know, on the fence to criticize, but it's time to work with the president. So are you telling me that the other parties or other governors who are governors of PDP states, uh, let's take, for example, states like River State, states like um, um, Bielsa, or states like um, Edo State, you're telling me that especially those kind of states that have PDP governors, are not working for the betterment of the state and the nation? Are they tearing down because they do not belong to the APC? Or you're telling me that the APC governor now, who is, well, Governor Yade, who is now an APC governor, is able to serve Cross better because he's under the auspices of the APC, but he couldn't do that when he was a PDP governor. Does the PDP tell the governor how to govern? Or does the APC do that either? Well, I think that uh, if you followed governance in Cross River State, you would see that uh, the governor has indeed done his best. He's industrialized Cross River State. He's embarked on series of projects that need to be sustained. And um, with all the projects he's embarked on, he needs support from the federal government. And again, Cross River State is uh, a state that is blessed with a lot of capacity. And um, you all know that uh, appointments in the national level, federal level are done based on party lines. We need to see how we can key our people in the center. We need to see how we can get our people properly appointed and positioned in the center. And um, I, I dare say that APC has done more in the past six years 
in Cross River State than PDP did in 16 years in Cross River State. You would remember that it was on that PDP watch that we lost our 76 oil wells. You would remember that it was on that PDP watch that our roads were not motorable across the length and breadth of the state. You would recall that it was under the watch of PDP that we had he had any presence at the federal level in terms of appointments and the rest of it. But today, even though we were in opposition, APC has been gracious to Cross River State in terms of appointments, in terms of uh, infrastructural development, and in terms of uh, financial assistance for in lieu of the loss of our oil wells. So it's only normal for the governor, having seen what had happened on the PDP, to take this kind of decision. And his decision simply is that let's come and work with the ruling party. Let's support the ruling party and see how we can better the lot of cross -fairs. Enough of the infighting, enough of uh, begging PDP to do what we thought they should have done uh, a long time ago. And let's take a bold step and move into the ruling party. And I think it's the step in the right direction, like I said earlier. Um, I want to go back to what the governor said. He talks about the oil wells that have been seeded a um, long time ago, obviously not under this government. He talked about the fact that um, the character of the president is one of the reasons why he joined the, decided to join the APC. I'd like to quote uh, the, pres the governor uh, directly. He said, and I quote, I, we all need as governors to recognize that it's not party that matters. It is character, it is honor, it is commitment um, to the vision of, the, of a great nation. So I want to break down all of these things for Professor Ben Ayade. Let's talk about the character of the governor. Let's talk about honor. Let's talk about his commitment to the people of Cross River State. There have been reports of serious insecurity for a state that used to be very touristic, a state that used to be a, a, a haven of sorts for people who were traveling from other parts of Nigeria. Now, people really um, do not feel as safe as they used to. The stories that are coming from Cross River State uh, have never been heard you know, in time past. So really, has the governor done well as a governor? And, and all of these characteristics that he's quoting um, about other governors, does he have those characteristics? Well, I think the governor has done his best. I think the governor has done very, very well. There is no part of Nigeria today that is secure. And it's no fault of the governors, uh, nor is it any major fault of Mr. President himself. It's work in progress. We need to get security right. We need to, add, and it's a, a whole uh different story if we're, we're about to go into security challenges i believe that to curb security challenges in nigeria the local governments need to be strengthened and empowered so that they can begin to check security challenges at that level how, ha how has to, governor uh, yade empowered how has governor yade 30. empowered local governments because you're saying that the local governments need to be empowered to be able to deal with the issue of insecurity how has the governor empowered local governments in Cross River State, because if this is what you're saying will help us uh, deal with insecurity, has he done that? Yeah, re uh, recently uh, 100 million was released to each council chairman in Cross River State. And I think if every state governor did that, uh, it will go a long way to strengthen. And I've been chairman of council, and I know that security issues emanate at the level of the local governments. If every local government chairman were, were up to speed in tackling the security challenges at that local government, I don't think we'll have the kind of crisis security-wise that we have today in Nigeria. So that said, I believe that the security issues are not peculiar to only cross river states. They are all over the country. You saw what happened with the NSAS rallies you, you've seen how uh, the spate of kidnapping banditry and crime are in the increase in nigeria so it's a general problem that all hands need to be on deck 
if we need to address this. So, and I, I try to advise that we don't politicize all of this. If we make it an APC problem, you will recall that even when PDP was in power, we had most of these challenges. There was a time where Abuja itself was not safe. There were bombings in Banex Plaza and some parts of Abuja that well, led, We're not talking about the federal Nigeria. capital territory here. We're talking so about I Cross River like State. We're talking about the state this. in itself. And that we go into the issue. Well, uh, Sorry? You, we're not talking about the country in its entirety. Of course, there are pockets of violence and banditry is not necessarily in Cross River State. But of course, we're talking about the, peculiar, the peculiarities of Cross River State, the insecurity, which most importantly is uh, characterized by cultism, beheadings. They're happening every single day. Uh, we've never really heard any case of, you know, um, banditry or Boko Haram in Cross River. So, you know, throwing your net out all the way to the Good Luck Administration and the FCT, the FCT does have its own, you know, peculiarities. We're looking at the character of the governor here and his alliance with the APC. And you're telling me generally that, uh, well, under the PDP, there were issues. Yes, we all know that. But what is the governor doing? Because governors are number one chief securities in their states. And the responsibility of keeping uh, the lives of the people in those entities safe lies solely on the desk of the governor and not necessarily his alliances at the center. Am I wrong or am I right? Uh, you're a bit wrong there because you need support from the center to tackle security issues. The police is not a state police, it's a federal police. The army and every security operative belongs to the federal government. So you need the absolute cooperation of the center if you're able to tackle security issues adequately. And again, here yeah, you would recall that the governor set up an operation, I think it's uh, Operation Apaku or something, that has gone a long way to curb the insecurity challenges across the state. All I'm saying is that the governor is doing his best. Uh, he doesn't have all the answers. And he's saying we should all come, put hands together, and see how we can move across the state forward. And I think, like I said earlier, the movement to APC is a step in the right direction to see how we can get adequate federal support to tackle all the challenges across the state is facing today. Interesting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Lego. Just stay with us for a second. I think we have joining us on the phone, not just uh, Baba Isa. Uh, we have Vinash Ikim now on the phone. Am I right? Um, Mr. Ikim, thank you for joining us. Well, you, if you have been listening to um, the Honorable, he's been speaking and telling us the reasons why the government of Cross River States has decided to move to join the APC. Now, you obviously used to be in the APC and you came back to the PDP and now you are a member of the PDP, which is now the opposition officially in the state. Um, I did talk about the reasons why the governor decided to move from the, a from the PDP to the APC and he talked about character, he talked about honor, and he talked about commitment to move Nigeria forward as a country. But I'm asking, what about Cross River? What is going to happen to the people of Cross River State? I mean, the governor hasn't changed, it's just the party and the flag that has changed. Uh, Baba Isa, maybe I'm going to throw this question to you. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you clearly. Please go ahead. No, uh, uh, the, the, the issue is still let me tell you something. Nigerians can no longer be fooled. Uh, cross Nigerians can no longer be fooled. When a politician jumps from one party to the other, it's just for his personal, selfish reasons and political permutations. So um, the governor is not leaving PDP to APC because he wants to better the life of cross -Iverians. In fact, how is that going to be done in the first place? Is it that because he's in the APC now, the federal allocation to cross River state is going to increase? Is it that the oil wells that were taken via a judicial process, are they going to be returned to the back door? I'm a cross -Iverian. I wish we, we do have those oil wells. We still have those oil wells, but we don't have them. So you can cite the lack of those oil wells or the fact that we don't have those oil wells as a reason why you are going to APC. How are we going to get them back? So security challenges. So what is going to happen now that you're an APC? Are you indicting the president? Are you saying the president is sending more policemen to APC state or more soldiers to APC state? 
What have you done when you were APC, when you were in PDP? What are you going to do differently now that you are in APC? This is a governor that for over a year refused to swear in a substantive chief judge. This is a governor that allowed the judiciary for several pockets of time to stay without the chief judge. And all of us know the very key rule the judiciary plays in criminal justice administration. So what's he going to do differently? This is a governor, just like many other governors in this country, that are strangulating the judiciary at the legislature. They have refused to grant them autonomy. So what are you going to do differently in the APC? Or is it that when you are in PDP, the APC instructed you not to grant the judiciary what, what and the legislature autonomy? These are, these are interesting questions that you've raised, Baba Isa. I, I'm so sorry, but I want to cut you off quickly and bring Vinicius Ikem in. He's been having problems joining us. Uh, Mr. Ikem, I'm sure that you've been listening to the conversation while you were trying to connect with us. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great. Um, I don't know. I, I need you to turn off your TV so you can hear me clearly. Um, you, you must, yes, you must have heard everything that Mr. Idagbo has said. And I want, to, I want to hear your thoughts because now the PDP seems to be in a state of limbo uh, because the whole um, leadership of the House of Assembly has been taken to the APC. Um, it, even the honorable member here representing Bakwara um, uh, um, and Obudu, um, Obanliku constituency is also moved to the APC. Uh, this has somewhat dented the party structure in the state. So where does this leave the PDP? Uh, thank you, Marianne, for having me. I'm sorry about the connection issues. Uh, I've had few snippets of the conversations between you and um, the barrister Issa and also Honorable Lego. Uh, first of all, let me say that, um, uh, let me comment on one of the issues Lego raised. He said definitely there's some uh, celebration in Cross River Street. That is very, very true. From Obudu to Bakasi, there has been celebration. But the celebration is like someone, several people said to me, it's like when a batch had died. I think we lost. People it. are celebrating the departure of the governor from the big thing to happen in the political history of this country. Having said that, he has enumerated several benefits, including multiple appointments. I hope you are still with me. Uh, infrastructure developments. Some things he said actually that we did not benefit when PDP was in government. We have been able to have them in this APC government. We thank Buhari and we thank the national government. So that, I don't know how that justifies the movement of uh, the governor to APC at this point in time, according to him, to attract federal benefits. I think to a large extent, we can accept that in Nigeria today, benefits are not necessarily distributed in accordance with political leanings. In some situations, in rare situations, yes, but that is not the order. Maybe that's the exception once in a while. Having also said that, I think that they are being very economical with the truth. The reality, like he said, is that the governor, Governor Ayade, who happens to come from the same local government with me, happens to come from the next village with me, has done everything to truncate democracy in Cross Plastic. How do you mean? He has managed, he, I'm, 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 I'm buttressing that point. He has managed to personalize the entire state. I don't even want to call it governance. If you talk about land grabbing, he has grabbed most of the lands that he can lay his hands on. You can go around the state, including our own community. In fact, he is not locally a land grabber. You can talk about appointments. Ayade has appointed more than 5,000 people into government, most of who have no responsibility. Absolutely. They just bear the titles. In fact, he tells you that it's just for food on the table. It is not for them to do anything. And I think that is ridiculous. Where well, a state, like he said, that is one of the poorest states. Thirdly, why did he wait till now to leave the party? If, I mean, to join the APC, if his issues are to join national government. The reality is that he wants to rule like an emperor. The country is aware. I know most people are aware. Today, we are blessed with the social media that it makes information very liberal across the globe. People know the kind of pretensions to knowledge the kind of pretensions to uh, absolute wisdom that Ayede has been displaying, which have led the entire state almost to a cul-de-sac. 
nothing is happening except Ayade. What the, what the only thing happening in Cross River State is Ayade and his brother and members so of the yet again, they So, do all so the yet contract, again, I'm sorry to speak over you. The, yet again, Ayade, the governor, has happened and he's all over the news. The papers are carrying it. That's the story for today. He's moved to the APC. Where does this leave the PDP in the state? The party, like I said before, PDP is in celebration mode. We want Ayade to leave for quite some time. He has not been of any benefit at all to the PDP. It is common knowledge within the party, within both parties, that even in the last general elections, Ayade boastfully supported the opposition. He tells you, even in party meetings, he tells you boastfully that he's more APC in Abuja than those who pretend to be APC in Cross River State. And so for him, it's been about personal benefits, personal aggrandizement, personal promotions like what you are saying today. It, 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 it gives him a turn on to be in the media, even if it's for the wrong reasons. He claims that he has industrialized cross river state. Let me, use, let me put that in parenthesis. Can somebody please do a proper audit of how many people Ayade has employed in his so-called industrialization? He will tell you he has opened 30 or more industries in cross river state. Please, let somebody do a check. If Ayade has up to 200 people in, legitimately employed in, any of, in a combination of all those companies, let him call me, call me out. The okay. truth is that Ayade is in, interested in importing those factories. He's import, interested in the brother, Frank Ayade, building the factories. He awards the contracts to him, or he pretends to be doing them through direct labor, using fronts. At the end of the day, once they finish construction and installation, those things are locked up. None of them is working. Nothing is working in Cross River State. So I don't know what they mean by industry. The country has been kept at, uh, I don't know, some kind of high falutin uh, uh, pretensions about a superhighway for six years. Suddenly, at a deep sea port, suddenly that has disappeared from our budget. After budgeting billions, hundreds of billions for the projects, nothing, not one kilometer of road has been constructed, but hundreds of billions have been sunk into those projects, making this impact, impoverishing the state worse than he found it. And today he tells you about going to the center to improve cross river state. Like you said, states are sub regional governments. If states can run their own affairs gainfully, nobody says you must align with federal government to have benefits. For okay. instance, the recent Bureau of uh, Statistics, uh, the, the recent statistics released by the Bureau of uh, Statistics was very clear. Cross river is amongst one of the highest states with unemployment statistics. We recorded 43% unemployment. And Ayade pretends that he's employing thousands and thousands and thousands of people in every industry. Let him come out and tell us. Okay. Let us see All where right. those youths, let, those young men and women are employed. Let me. The let me. That Cross River has been put on a long run, a long jump. Okay. Nothing has happened. Okay. Um, Basically, Honorable, uh, Honorable Lego Idabo was telling me. Except to go and protect himself. And the expectation that APC central government will protect him from uh, uh, what do we. Um, I, I, I want to say that uh, while I was speaking with the Honorable, he did say that the state, the governor has done his best in the state and he has done well. Uh, and I'm guessing that this best includes the, uh, um, the economy, uh, includes the uh, security apparatus, because he did mention, he pointed out that there's been this operation of PACWA, which I've seen vehicles on the road. Um, but then I remember on the same show I had... Uh, a, a governor's aide on the show and I had a journalist in the state where there were back-to-back -back robberies happening in the state um, and people were feeling unsafe. Uh, the NCDC at some point said they found uh, beheaded bodies where the police in the state at that time said they didn't see any bodies. And there have been all kinds of things. So I'm trying to understand what you're saying, if it's reality, uh, NSCDC, I beg your pardon, not NCDC. Um, so I'm trying to understand what's fact and what's fiction. Because you're saying the state has become more impoverished than the governor found it. But then Honorable Lego Idagbo here is telling me that the governor has done his best and he's, he's about to do more now that he's aligned with the party at the center. Honorable Lego Idagbo, do you care to respond to what Mr. Vanashius has been saying? I try not to politicize everything. It's not everything that is politics. You know, it's easy to criticize Governor Ben Ayade. It's easy to say he's faulted in A, B, C, D area. It's easy to make all sorts of allegations, even though you don't have proof of them, you know, just for political reasons. But the truth be told is that Governor Ben Ayade is not a saint. He's not uh, 
they performed any miracle in Cross River State. But I think that he's trying. We should remember that Cross River State is one of the poorest states in the country. They have one of the least allocations. And okay, today he has bought about three aircraft, Cali Air. You know, this is the first time this is happening in Cross River State. Venash Zikem cannot, in good conscience, claim that the governor has not done anything right. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are issues. Yes, the governor is trying, but he hasn't gotten everything perfect. But for us and myself, I believe that as a well-meaning cross Riverian, I should support the little efforts of the governor. I should rather be in the kitchen with the governor, seeing how we can better the lot of cross River state. And at the end of the day, posterity... I don't know whether I, I, don't know whether I can interject at some... Uh, uh, let, let's just let him land so that you can come in so we can have a smooth conversation, if you don't mind. At the end of the day, posterity will judge some of us, in right? The of, we we were talk from the background of certain yardsticks. At inauguration, the governor set a certain standard for himself. He said... I may not be able to put precisely his words. He, he brought what he calls signature projects. One of them was the superhighway. The second one was the deep sea port. A couple of other projects followed thereafter. Let, can we, and he said that he will not seek second term unless people were going to judge him by his performance on those two projects. As we speak today, let me not go into frivolities. They go say we should speak with facts. On the basis of that judgment, on that standard he set for himself, I want to ask Honorable Lego, how well has the governor done? Buy okay. an aircraft, buy an aircraft or two to pretend that you are performing at the twilight uh, of your administration. Can I, can I, uh, can he respond? Close as far as I'm concerned, because that has almost nothing to do with the welfare of the people. We, talk about, we talk about the economy of the state. Most can, businesses have relocated from Cross River State to a private. Why? And because I, of multiple taxation. And unfortunately, the governor goes around this, the media to advertise that he is not taxing small businesses. But small businesses are, have crumbled. The few who, were, who could have survived have relocated. What is the yastic for measuring a yade, even if we use his own? All right, so let's, let, let's, let's, let's allow the honorable to respond Let to you. Let's, 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 let's allow the honorable to respond to you because you've asked him two questions, if you don't mind. Let Can he you, respond? Great. Him. I would be the last person to play politics with the welfare of the people, and I would advise you not to do the same, because uh, it, it, it's not enough to criticize the governor. It's, 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 it's I mean, we, we, I'm not. I, I've asked you. I've, I've asked you by the standards, by the yes. Okay, let said, me let me respond said, to your for his own measurements of achievement. Mm, how well has he done? Approach. But we talk about mm -hmm. okay, gentlemen. Let, let's well let's let one person Angel. speak at a time so that we can have a great conversation. We, we're not communicating if it's just you know too many voices at the same time. Honorable Lego, go ahead, and then Mr. Venetius would respond. Then are the two signature projects you're, you're talking about the super highway and the deep sea port. Nobody pointed the governor a gun and asked him to make those commitments on the day he was inaugurated. Absolutely I believe not. he made commitments meaning well and believing that he was going to do that. And he set that bar for himself. But at moving forward, he realized that these things did not rely solely on Cross River State. Like you said, Cross River State is sub-national. There are certain approvals that must come from the national government that the state cannot do. Before you construct a super highway and a deep sea port. You need certain approvals, EIAs and the rest of them that must come from the federal government. What politics played out? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, who, who wanted a, a, a deep sea port in Calabar? So many people did not. Our brothers from the West believed that if there was a deep sea port in Calabar, it was going to take over business from the West. And then approvals reluctantly or didn't even come at all. So you cannot single-handedly blame the governor. I think the governor meant well. He started these projects. He tried his best. He was frustrated. And you can't crucify him because of that. Let's move on. But is it, is it, is it, right, is it right for me, uh, an, an onlooker, for example, to, to say that the governor has been undertaking time and time again white elephant project 
knowing the bottlenecks, because I'm guessing that even I, a, a, as a journalist, before I undertake anything, I would do my own feasibility studies. I would do my research, knowing exactly. that there will be exactly. certain things who might, that might block me before I do that thing, or even make a, an oath of sorts, or make a promise that if I do not deliver, I should not seek for a second term. But of course, these things happen. It's politics. So I'm asking, is it right to say that it's Governor Ben Ayade has it's always been. gone ahead to initiate ele white elephant projects and then the monies of the state are tied down and that maybe is the reason why Cross River State is as poor as it is right now? I don't agree with that. It's not only Ben Ayade that has made promises that he has Well, he's kept. the governor of the Even state right of now. The United... He's the governor of the Even state now, so he's our concern. United have made promises that they meant to keep but the circumstances... Okay, uh, okay, if I understand, if I want to understand... Can, 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 can you allow him speak, Mr. Venetius? Mr. Venetius, please, can you hold on? Yeah, Let him so speak. I is right to make promises that he cannot fulfill. They are, they, they Mr. Venetius, he came. Can, you, can you allow... Billions and billions of possible state funds have been sunk into those projects. And until he's saying this, the governor has never come at any point to the public to explain that he's no longer proceeding with those projects. That's one. Two... In this, it is the same way I'm looking at the idea of purchasing three aircraft and pretending to be constructing one okay. of the biggest airports in the world at in our village in Ogudu, okay. called a cargo airport. All right, I Mr. don't know, know the cargo that he intends to transport from Ogudu or transport into Ogudu that warrants one of the biggest airports Mr. Ikem, in the world. Can, well, can, maybe not, say, I mean, one of the biggest. Um, can you hear me? Uh, can Can we have a very? Can we He's have a, a five tower? A Ms. five Ikem. kilometer runway at Obudu for a reason. I might have to let knows. you go. And if we know you, that this is keep interjecting. of his administration. Tomorrow Mr. we'll have this same excuse because, like you just called it, that is Mr. Venetia Sikem, I'm going to say this one more time. That is not intended to be achieved. I might have to let you to... go if you do not allow the other guest to speak because when you're speaking, I let him allow I'm you sorry, speak. I'm sorry if I'm talking much of time. You know, I came late on Please, the program. Please, so let's allow uh, Honorable Lego speak, speak so that we can wrap up this conversation. Thank you. Maria, you thought I have not even spoken. Please don't interject. has always interjected me and spoken all he wants. I think he's been emotional. Uh, I was just trying to be factual. I said, let's not put all the blames on the governor. Let's think moving forward what we can collect. I don't know what, that, what about the superhighway and the deep sea port that is more emotional. Mr. Venetia, I don't know what you have been talking about. That can we just let Lego answer? I'm talking facts. So I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're, you're talking, about. talking about facts and emotions. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you're... gentlemen, I'm going to have to let you both go because unfortunately we're not having a conversation and it's just, you know. Um, one person overlapping each other. So, um, but I want to thank you. Vanessa Sikim is a member of the People's Democratic Party. He used to be a former publicity secretary for the party. And Honorable Legoy Dabo is a member of the House of Representatives and he's representing Bakwara Ubudu and Obanliku in the National Assembly. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm sure that 2023 is going to be very interesting in Cross River. Thank you, Megan. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll talk briefly on the Attorney General's uh, position on restructuring in Nigeria. Stay with us. <laughs>